Welcome to the channel everyone. I'm Warmaster Moloch and this is an army guide for Nakari and the Seducers of Slanesh in Total War Warhammer 3, in which I'll take you through the different units that are on offer with this faction, which ones are great, which ones stink, and how I win battles with them. Please bear in mind that I'm a campaign specialist and I play exclusively on Legendary Difficulty, so my comments are weighted accordingly. If you're more of a multiplayer fan or you play on lower difficulty levels, what I say will still apply, but you'll probably find that the units that I criticise will serve you better than they do me, while the ones that I praise will probably be even more effective for you. Now with that out of the way, let's get started with the guide. Slash's forces are the vanguard for the new meta for Total War Warhammer, in that the Perfect Prince's armies do not come with ranged options. That's right. You're going to have to get in and get physical and dirty with the enemy, which is just the way Slanesh likes it. This would have been a terrifying prospect in Warhammer 2 on Legendary and very hard difficulties. So how does it stand up in Warhammer 3? Well, melee itself has definitely been improved overall, but on the highest battle difficulty level, it can still be a real slog, especially because Slanesh is a big fan of nudity and thus doesn't really want armor getting in the way of the saucy bits. Right now, you might be thinking, well, looks like I'm never playing a Slanesh then. But that'd be a mistake because to balance out that absence of range, Creative Assembly have given Slanesh solid magic in the lore of Slanesh and the lore of Shadows. Just as important a gift from the developers though is speed. Lots and lots of speed. The armies of Slanesh have a number of high speed, high impact options that do great damage, disrupt formations and enable you to strike, push through and then get away at speed and regroup for another attack. Now, if that sounds like a lot of micro, well, it is. However, it's also a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll start to see why. And with the introduction done and you, the viewer, hopefully intrigued by the bounties that our dirty, nudie savior has to offer, let's get into the armies, starting with the Lord choices. First up is Nakari himself, and oh my word, he is a stone cold, one boob killing machine. A hybrid lord bringing the lore of Slanesh to the table, but Nakari is just as happy killing his enemies hand to hand. He brings 85 leadership, 70 melee attack with magical damage, 60 melee defense, and a massive 520 weapon strength, with armor piercing and a charge bonus of 40. Most important stats to note, though, are his armor and his speed. With just 5 armor, you don't want him to be left in combat for too long, as the hits that he takes can do a fair bit of damage to him. However, this is countered by his speed and his animations. Nakari is absolutely huge. So when he does his fancy Slaneshi pirouette attacks, he can move clear through multiple units and out the other side, then use his base 100 speed with Strider to run away from trouble. If he does get himself entrenched though, and you have some Winds of Magic available, a single cast of slicing shards will do horrendous damage to the enemy and give him that escape option as well as a bunch of kills. Having the devastating flanker trait also doubles his charge bonus when charging into the sides or rear of a unit. Get him the Wit Stealer Sword and he's even more devastating, with buffs of 100% to base weapon damage and armor piercing weapon damage. And of course, being absolutely massive and having purple lobster claws, he causes terror. And if all that isn't enough for you, he has Harvester of Souls available to unlock. So when an enemy unit dies within 30 meters of him, he can get replenishment. Also of note is that he's a demonic unit, so he begins to disintegrate when his leadership is broken. Bear that part in mind, because it's true of all of Slanesh's generals, as well as most of his units. Next up are your Exalted Keepers of Secrets. Think of these as a kind of Nakari light option, with a base total of 220 fewer hit points, 5 less leadership, 20 fewer points for speed and melee attack, and 50 less weapon strength. The drop in speed is a major factor to consider, and they actually feel slower on the approach just because of their sashaying walk animation. But 80 is still a high stat, and they're going to outrun basically everything except for cavalry flyers and dogs, especially as they still come with Strider. They don't come with exactly the same animations as Nakari, so they don't scatter enemies quite as efficiently in order to escape blobs, but they do have a very powerful pirouette animation which, when randomly triggered, clears plenty of space around them. Crucially though, you can choose between two flavours of magic with both the laws of Slanesh and of Shadows available. When you consider that the Penumbral Pendulum is ridiculously overpowered at this pre-release stage, 
that makes the option of going with shadows very tempting. I'm expecting the pendulum to be nerfed very quickly though after launch, so enjoy it while you can. These guys can also unlock Ballet of Blows, which gives a 15 second melee boost on three tiers of value, as well as Seductive Glory, which nerfs enemy melee defense and causes Rampage. Quite the one-two punch when you're caught in a blob and need to fight your way out. And as a last little trick for the Keepers, they can unlock Feasting on Fear, which is a passive ability which gives regeneration when any enemy unit from 30 meters or less drops to a morale of wavering or below. Moving on to the cheaper option for Lords, we find the Heralds of Slanesh. Again, they come in Shadows or Slanesh magic flavors, and they get more armor and melee attack with scores of 15 and 60 respectively. However, they pay for that with reduced leadership, speed, melee defense, and weapon strength. They also don't get Nakari and the Keeper's animations to get them out of trouble, nor the size advantage in combat. But on the other hand, they also aren't towering bullet sponges for enemy ranged fire, so they're more viable than you may at first believe especially as they can also unlock two free summons of Chaos Furies per battle. Now, Chaos Furies, as we're going to come on to, aren't amazing, but free units are free units. Heroes are next on our list, and there are only two varieties on offer, so I'm expecting more to be added in future DLCs. Right now, we have the Cultist of Slanesh and the Allurus of Slanesh. The Cultist is an anti-infantry melee specialist unit, with solid overall stats and some extra armor, but which is noticeably slower than the alternative. Obviously, you can counter that with their Chaos Steed mount, but overall it comes across as a weak option for your army. However, the Cultist also comes with an unlockable ability to summon a unit of Demonettes, which greatly adds to their value. Worth having, but you'll want to level them up fast in campaign to get the best out of these units. Most obviously worth recruiting, though, is the Allure S. This is your caster hero, but a lot more. They're demonic, come with armor piercing and strong melee stats, really good base speed, and of course, magic. Just to add to their advantage over the cultists, though, they can unlock three mounts, peaking with the Exalter Seeker Chariot. This lowers their melee stats, but gives them poison attacks, more armor, more speed, and a massive boost to charge bonus, as well as allowing them to sunder armies. Naturally, you can recruit these in Shadow and Slanesh magic laws, and it's pretty obvious that if you can only bring one hero to the table, you want to make it an Allure S. Time for some melee infantry, folks. And after three and a half years of playing Warhammer 2, boy, does it feel weird saying that in a guide, because anyone who's ever watched one of my campaigns even once knows that I almost never recruit any. This, though, is a new game and a new day, so I'm doing it now. May the horned rat have mercy on my rattling gun loving soul. There are five units of melee infantry available to the Pervy Prince, and three of those are varieties of Marauder. Anyone who's ever played as Chaos or Norska in either of the first two Warhammer games just winced and felt their soul wither a bit. And with good reason. Let's start with the positives of the Marauders. Firstly, they aren't that expensive. Secondly, they have shields. Thirdly, they're immune to psychology. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, I'm being a bit facetious. We'll actually begin by looking at the most cheap and basic of the Marauders, which is the sword variety. These come with a base armor of 15, 60 leadership, 38 speed, 32 melee attack, 20 melee defense, weapon strength of 28, charge bonus of 16. Great's not a word I would use. Meh is a word I would use. Chaff is another word that I would use. Shower of turrets coated in snot and even more crap is a lot of words, but it definitely applies. The spear version loses some melee attack, some weapon strength and some charge bonus in return for gaining a pretty hefty melee defense buff up to a base of 32. In addition, they also do damage to the enemy when being charged. So they're a little bit better considering that these are supposed to be your linchpin units when holding enemies in place. Finally, you get the Hell Scourge Marauders, who are basically the same thing, only with kinky whips and doubtless some handcuffs concealed in their fur jock straps. These guys don't lose any stats from the sword variety, but get a massive plus 22 boost to their melee defense, as well as plus 6 to their charge bonus. These are the guys who you actually want if you can afford it, at least until you reach the point in your campaign at which money is no object and you no longer need to recruit these basic boys. 
Moving on from Marauders, we reach the Demonettes, who are possibly the most iconic of Slanesh's units, maybe except for the Keepers of Secrets. These demonic lobster ladies only have five armor and no shields, but the rest of their stats are much more appealing. They get base stats of 60 leadership, 54 speed, 38 melee attack with magic damage, 36 melee defense, 32 weapon strength with armor piercing, and a charge bonus of 20. On top of this, they also cause fear and have the devastating flanker trait. The exalted demonettes get significant stat boosts on top of that and add in the charmed ability, which drops the melee attack stats of the unit that they're attacking by 8 points. They also have a passive augment available called Soul Scent, which can buff their armor piercing damage and their melee attack. These are really good buffs, but the unit is far more expensive, so you'll wind up paying for it. Overall, I'd put Demonettes in the Glass Cannon category due to their weak armor. But between their speed, solid melee defense and added extras, they're a more exciting proposition than the Marauders. No, not in that way, you absolute degenerate. Monsters next, starting with the Chaos Furies. No, not Chaos Furies, that's the Beastmen. These demons are a classic fast-flying flanking harassment unit with vanguard, high speed and solid magical melee attack, but weak leadership and defense. They're not useless, but if they come up against any kind of ranged unit or heavier flyers, they aren't going to last more than a few seconds. They're more of an annoying distraction than a battle winner, but when you're fighting against the AI, annoying it is often half the battle. Spawn of Slanesh are the classic Chaos spawn that we all knew and shot the hell out of while playing as better factions than Chaos in Warhammers 1 and 2, only with a new phallic pink and purple paint job. Very high leadership and unbreakable, they have their place for Slanesh, largely because of the siege attacker option, but also due to devastating flanker and soporific musk, which lowers enemy attack and defense stats. Fiends of Slanesh are where things start to become more exciting, and you get a unit of these in Nakari's starting army and campaign. These demonic licky boys are very, very fast, with 95 base speed, so they can dart in and out of fights at high speed. They also have solid stats overall to back up their speed and do a solid amount of armor-piercing damage alongside magical attack, and their soporific musk debuff that they inflict on targeted units, dropping melee defense and attack stats by 8 each. Now, how to describe the soul grinder of Slanesh? Imagine, if you will, a demonic cyborg lobster spider. Basically, he's what would happen if Skynet didn't want to nuke the world, but instead just really wanted a super thematic doorman for their new fancy seafood restaurant. That's your boy. Unlike the other Ludi lot, this one comes with a butt-ton of armor at 90 base and a ton of weapon strength at 520, while also still being really fast at 75. He gets armor piercing, bonus versus large, magical damage and soporific musk at minus five for enemy melee attack and defense. He's a siege attacker, he's a strider, an expert flanker, and he causes terror. Basically, he's an all-purpose wrecking machine, but the debuffs and bonus versus large mean that he's an ideal lord and monster sniper. Be rude to the waiters at his seafood restaurant at your peril. The Keeper of Secrets is the last monster on Slanesh's army list and is essentially a basic edition of the Exalted Keeper Lord. The stats are obviously very strong, with the predictable exception of armor. Importantly, this monster comes with spells attached, albeit the most basic two from the lore of Slanesh. You get Lash of Slanesh, Acquiescence, and the passive Blissful Rapture. Add that to Devastating Flanker, Terror, Strider, Siege Attacker, and you have a great multi-purpose monster choice who can shake that ass like Cardi B on amphetamines. There's a mental image for you guys. You're welcome. We're into cavalry and chariots now, and this is where Slanesh gets seriously racy, with some top-tier pimp wagons to excite the ladies and the lads with. First up are the Hellstriders of Slanesh, who come in both spear and whip varieties. They get vanguard, are immune to psychology, shielded, they cause fear, and they get the Soul Hunter's passive ability that makes them more dangerous with each kill that they make. On top of that, they deal poison attacks. The spear variety gets bonus versus large, so couple that with the poison in their 100 speed and their expert cavalry killers. The whip version, on the other hand, gets better overall melee stats, marking them out as an anti-infantry option. These are great units for diving into battle, 
hitting and then escaping before they can get bogged down, ideally dragging some enemies into a chase so that they can turn around and pick them off in isolation. Seeker chariots are an option that come substantially better armoured, with strong emphasis on disrupting lines, sundering infantry and opening space for others to attack. They too have absolutely massive speed and magical damage on top of the poison attacks. They get armor piercing and bonus versus infantry on top of that. And with devastating flanker and causes fear, they're a superb unit for crashing into an enemy line or blob and pushing through to the other side, sundering the enemy formation, then turning around and doing it all over again. Just don't get yourself bogged down or try to turn while engaged in a blob of enemies because that's when they'll really be able to stick the knife in on you. Seekers of Celesh are honestly very similar to the Hellstriders, given that they're basically the same demon, only with a demonette on their back. They don't get any particular specialism against a particular type of unit, but their stats are most similar to the Hellscourge variety, only with less armor and more melee attack. Hellflayers are basically pimped out Seeker Chariots with extra spiky bits, better melee attack, leadership and weapon strength, as well as Soul Scent, which buffs their armor piercing and melee attack as nearby enemies waver or rout. The wider models mean that you can punch even larger holes into the enemy's formation while doing more damage than the Seeker Chariots would have. Which brings me on to the Exalted Seeker Chariot. This is a single chariot unit with higher melee defense, greater charge bonus, and a whopping 190 base weapon strength advantage over the Hellflayers. It's extremely wide and very spiky, which means that it can throw enemy units around like they're confetti. However, it doesn't get the soul sent passive, and its width also means that if you're not selective with your targets, then it can be bogged down, unable to turn and escape, leaving it as easy prey for enemy anti-large. Used correctly, though, it can spread disarray through whole sections of an army. Lastly, but by no means leastly, we have the Heart Seekers of Slanesh, and I'm sure you can already guess what these are. They're buffed up, better armoured Hellstriders of Slanesh, that come with better stats on everything other than speed plus soul scent. But bear in mind that these buffs come at a cost, so choose your unit wisely according to your budget. The biggest question that should be on your mind having watched this video is how the hell can you win battles with a hammer and anvil faction that has an anvil made of cracked glass and wet toilet paper? It's immediately obvious that the seducers of Selenesh will require a lot of adaptation, even for experienced players on Legendary. The closest parallel I can think of in Warhammer 2 is Bretonia just because of the cavalry, but even they have peasant archers and trebuchets. The key to success as Nakari is that you need to go all in with speed and mobility as soon as possible, but even then it takes a long time before you're even able to do that in your campaign because of cost and recruitment constraints. At the start, you have some Marauders, some Demonettes, a unit of Hellstriders, some Fiends of Slanesh, and a unit of Hellflares alongside Nakari himself. After your first battle, you get an Allures, and you'll want to recruit some more Marauders because, well, you'll need a bigger army, and that's all you can afford. What you quickly wind up realising, though, is that it's all about getting the most out of those pacey units and the spellcasters. Nakari, the Hellflayers, and the Hellstriders all have 100 speed. The Fiends of Slanesh have 95. Basically, there's very little in the game that can keep up with them. So what I do is use them as a kind of harassment squad to attack an enemy's faster unit, then run away drawing the enemy with them to isolate and pick off these units piecemeal until the enemy has nothing fast left. And then you can start to encircle them and they're basically toast because my speedy boy stroke girls can slam into units, sunder their lines, and the casters can blast them with magic. By the time they actually reach my infantry, they've already had a ton of damage done to them, making it much easier for my lousy marauders to stand and fight. It's micro-intensive, but it does work. Now, some important things to note about fighting with a Celestia army are, number one, use Nakari and the Exalted Keepers of Secrets aggressively. They're incredibly powerful in melee, and they have magic on their side. So getting one of them, say, surrounded by melee and hacking around with those pirouetting attacks that they do, and then dropping a Slicing Shards Bombardment spell on top of them is absolutely glorious. It's a World War II-style massacre in there. Number two, don't let the AI engage your infantry too early. They don't hold up for too long, so make sure they're only engaged when you're ready to flank and attack, and ideally you've tired the enemy out. Number three, don't overdose on chariots. They're great, and you can get some on tier three, which is already an improvement on marauders, 
but they don't do a huge amount of killing in their own right until you've done a lot of charging with them. Instead, you want to use them to sunder the enemy, then charge in your lords, heroes, monsters, seeker cavalry units, and or infantry, especially demonettes, to do the real killing, while you pull the chariots around to sunder the enemy again. And number four, for sieges, start your army in one location so that the enemy concentrate their defences there. Then when the battle starts, send your fast units around to the side or rear to take out defences where they're vulnerable and capture their control points, drawing individual units away from where they are so that they can be picked off piecemeal, while your infantry, lord and spellcaster attack them in the original position or move again to throw the enemy off even more. If, like the elven ghost ladies in the trailer there, you want more, subscribe to the channel because there's going to be a lot more Total War Warhammer 3 content coming very soon. If there's anything in particular that you're interested in seeing, drop it in the comments section and I will take a look at it and see what I can do. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope to see you in the comments section of the next video. Cheers.